Okay, so welcome to class eight. Uh, so I will begin by saying that whatever was discussed in the previous two classes, the ideas of microstates, uh, principle of agodic hypothesis, postulate of equal a priori probability, and so on and so forth. Uh, why? What is the idea of an ensemble? And all these basic concepts, they have been very nicely discussed in uh, the chapter two of Rife. And that really helps build a physical picture, intuition about these basic ideas and assumptions. Okay, so... Um, so th that's that. Uh, so if you have problems in imagining those or coming to terms with those postulates and hypothesis and ergodic hypothesis and so on and so forth, then what is the physical basis? That's much very well with many examples is demonstrated in Rife. Whereas what Patria does is basically tell about these uh, postulates and hypothesis, etc. Uh, so in one one or two pages, and by page number three or four. It really jumps into how to use those um, ideas. And the expectation is as you start working with those, you'll get a uh, better understanding of that. So, so whereas the previous two classes uh, or the class was from basically right where we're giving intuitions and so on, this class and the next are going to be from Patria and Wang. Uh, with that, background uh, we started directly about uh, the idea of entropy in statmec and the thing to emphasize is that statmec gives a physical interpretation of the rather abstract thermodynamic state function which was defined as entropy and it was calculated or change in entropy was calculated uh, by the heat transfer, there should be a bar here to remind you that dq is not a function of state, uh, it's not a state function, but very interestingly, um, entropy, uh, where change in entropy was defined uh, by d bar cube over t, that was a state function. And it gave an idea about the amount of heat uh, wasted, which could not be uh, converted into work, uh, but with entrop, but with statmec, uh, we get a microscopic picture of and um, understanding of this idea, relatively abstract, I uh, abstract concept of entropy, abstract in thermodynamics, which could be calculated and interpreted in terms of heat wasted. So before going further, we shall just have a quick overview of the properties of entropy. Uh, point number one, that ds is an exact differential, that ds is d bar uh, q over t, calculated over a reversible process, where d bar q is the amount of heat added to a system, added or subtracted to a system. Uh, and it was shown that entropy is a state function. I've already discussed this. Uh, while we were in the previous slide. Moreover, we know that entropy is an extensive quantity. What does extensive quantity mean? If you have bigger amount of mass and bigger, more uh, number of particles, uh, then uh, entropy will be more uh, in a linear manner. So if you have two systems, suppose of S1 and uh, S2 isolated, say, then the total entropy of the combined system if they remain uh, non-interacting, will be S1 plus S2. And if there's a third object with more number of particles, it will be plus S3. So entropy will increase. On the other hand, pressure, a, a quantity like the pressure, right? that's an intrinsic quantity. Volume is an extensive quantity. It is maintained at the same density and pressure. right? So entropy is an extensive quantity. And moreover, we know that in any process in, uh, which is naturally flowing or naturally occurring, you change the um, external conditions so that the system um, relaxes to a new equilibrium. And that's an irreversible process. In such a phenomena, entropy is going to increase. I have a, a, a written ds greater than equal to zero, but in any irreversible process, 
where a system relaxes to a new equilibrium state, isolated system entropy is al always going to increase. This is the general way how the second law of thermodynamics is written. Hence, I've added this uh, thing in red, right? And this point, a property of entropy will be more clear um, as we, towards the end of the next two lectures. But the whole idea is that in any closed system, closed, heat exchange is allowed, uh, right? The most probable state, so it's, now I'm not talking about an isolated system, but a closed system, uh, N and V is fixed, total number of particles is fixed, but there's energy heat exchange allowed. So such a system, so a small system in contact with its huge heat bath, uh, it will be in a state the uh, which will so it will so of course it can access huge number of microstates with all different values of energy and smaller values of energy right uh, but uh, it will be it will essentially spend especially if it's statistically large system in with in a set of microstates because you know high energy microstates are uh, have low probability, low energy microstates could have smaller number of microstates corresponding to it. As a consequence, um, as was pointed out in the class that in the in the room, uh, basically the average energy is nearly fixed. It doesn't fluctuate much, and that corresponds to a set of microstates uh, which are much more probable compared to other, rather it doesn't show large fluctuations. So the most probable state is one of equal or greater entropy. So the here, so basically the system is going to be in a state where its entropy is maximized. Ideally, free energy is uh, minimized because you are talking about a cl closed system. But if we just look at the system and say, oh, okay, this is its energy. Its energy is not fluctuating much. Um, and it will have a huge number of microstates corresponding to that. Those most probable uh, values of, say, energy, say, volume, and so on and so forth, and fluctuations uh, will be less. And if you change the external conditions, it can evolve to something else, but it will have a state uh, with more average entropy. So um, when I'm using the word entropy here, since it's a closed system, entropy can fluctuate, but uh, average entropy will be more if it evolves to some other state. Right? And large fluctuations are going to be very less. So that's the point. Having said that, uh, phase space volume, you know, phase space is a six and dimensional uh, space uh, and it's volume, uh, uh, phase space volume will be, uh, if you calculate the volume, it will be uh, basically the dimensions of momentum into dimensions of length right space and momentum and cube because there are three for each particle and if you have n particles it will be to the power n right so p into l has dimensions of angular momentum and for a part i mean basically the space for a single particle is p uh, well p dot l if i'm writing uh, this is not dot product but into and in cube, so and for n, it will be this to the power n. Uh, a unit volume of phase space. So suppose it has phase space. Now we have to calculate its volume, and it's you want a basic unit in which uh, its value will be calculated. So there's a minimum basic unit volume. We're going to discretize it and say, okay, we're going to specify uh, microstates with a certain specificity where we can specify the P, but only with so much accuracy and space with only so much accuracy, 
right? And that also comes from quantum mechanics, but initially uh, when all these ideas were developed, quantum mechanics was not developed. So the basic dimension for a single particle that it can be specified accurately. Uh, the, so that's the unit of phase space, we'll call it H. And later it will be realized or it was realized the value of H is the Planck constant. Okay, uh, so that's the unit of phase space. And of course, H has units of angular momentum. And in that case, uh, if you are calculating the volume of phase space or, or number of microstates possible, then essentially entropy is a measure of the imprecision of our knowledge because the system can be in these different microstates. So that's uh, larger the volume of phase space larger the number of microstates you can say we don't know exactly where the system is and as we will show that s is equal to k log omega and hence it's a measure of the imprecision of our knowledge we could also say that it's a uh, it's a measure of the randomness of the system right so so that's that's an idea now let's systematically ask now that we know or rather I have already told you a priori uh, that we are going to associate k log omega with entropy, right? So let's first check whether k log omega, does it have all the right properties that we have been discussing? This first to start out with, let's ask, is it additive? What does additive mean if you have system one, gas one? Uh, with omega number of microstates. And it has omega number of microstates because it has N1 particles in volume V1 uh, with energy E1 and it's an isolated system. And uh, suppose you have gas 2 with N2, V2 and E2 and number of microstates available is omega 2, say. It's another isolated system. Suppose it's gas 2, but you know, for all you know, what you need is the number of degrees of freedom. It could as well be a magnet, right? All that you are talking about that it has N2 magnetic spin, suppose, in a volume V and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so, so it has omega 2 microstates, isolated system. But let's think of gas. Then will the total entropy of the system be S1 by S2 as per this definition? So let's check that out. And then I would like to remind you uh, that uh, suppose this has a set of microstates. So, right? so we have to calculate microstates uh, because that's the microscopic definition. And from there, uh, calculate the entropy. So the system, a new system is defined, uh, not a new system, but you are taking a combination of isolated system one and isolated system two. And then we're going to ask the question, what is the total number of microstates um, of this system and that system, though they are isolated with each other. So for suppose a certain particular configuration of gas molecule, uh, molecules, configuration in position, and you could have also configuration in momenta. It will have, so this will be in some other microstate. Now let's keep this microstate fixed. Suppose this is somehow free, frozen it, okay? But still, this system will go on evolving or rather, I mean, imaginary Jendakin experiment, we have frozen the number of microstates. But this system is evolving. So for every one particular microstates, it will have omega-2 microstates Right, so what I mean to say is that for every microstate of system one, there are omega two microstates of system two. As particles of systems can rearrange themselves in configuration in momenta, independent of that of the configuration of system one. And similarly, the Configuration of system one, the particles in system one can rearrange themselves 
in phase space, in real space and momenta space, independent of the micro which microstate system two is in. Right? For every micro state, you have so many ways of arranging particles of system one and vice versa. So the total number of microstates of the two systems combined, since they're independent of each other, are omega one into omega two. And if you take S of the total system to be KB log omega one into omega two, then immediately you get uh, by the log properties that you get omega, ln omega 1 plus ln omega 2, which is S1 plus S2, entropy of the two part, two systems considered in isolation. And the entropy of the total system is S1 plus S2, which is the additive property of entropy. So at least if you take um, entropy, if you define this quantity k long omega to be entropy, at least in this aspect, things are consistent okay there's not there's no problem it behaves in the right way i mean it has all the right properties of entropy now what about heat exchange so you know in thermodynamics uh, we talk about two systems and suppose they are in two temperature t1 and t2 and uh, when you bring them in contact heat will flow from the system at higher temperature to the system at lower temperature till the temperature becomes equal, right? Uh, so let's discuss uh, similar systems. So we bring two isolated systems and we bring them in contact. So the initial system, system S1 had N1, V1 and E1. System S2 was uh, N2, V2 and E2. Two systems were separately in E2 equilibrium, but now they are brought in thermal contact so that heat can exchange. V1 and N1 still remains fixed. Here N2 and V2 still remains fixed, but E1 and E2, they can change and the energy can be redistributed. So how would they behave? So suppose it reaches a new equilibrium, but now we, have, we are discussing micro uh, picks and heat is going to flow uh, and going to rearrange the, the two systems can have different amounts of uh, energy. Heat can flow and it can have different amounts of energy. Suppose uh, the equilibrium energy is E1 dash uh, plus E2 dash in the two systems. But the total energy of course remains con conserved. And uh, as they're brought in contact in what we are going to discuss uh, next, we are going to ignore the energy of interaction at the surface when we bring the two systems in contact with each other. Okay, so, so what will be the equilibrium? Now we know the thermodynamics equilibrium, but discussing in terms of statmic, what is the new equilibrium? So what we say, okay, previously the number of microstates when the two systems were isolated, uh, we know what is the total number of microstates. It was omega zero, which is omega one, the number of microstates of system uh, E1 uh, into omega two, the total number of microstates of system E2 with energy, um, with, with, of system S2 with energy E2, right? But after contact, uh, the energies of the two systems have redistributed to themselves and the total, the new total number of microstates uh, will be omega zero dash. And of course, omega zero dash has to be higher than omega zero, but we'll discuss that later. But let's first figure out what is the condition of equilibrium. How will energy redistribute themselves? And that is especially, uh, so the questions we are asking is how will energy flow from which system to which system? We have all only access uh, to uh, this information and this information. So the question is, how will the energy flow? How are we going to decide that microscopically? Uh, previous, in thermodynamically, we can say higher temperature to lower temperature, right? But here, all that we have is definition of these microstates on or how a system is going across phase space. Right? Can we even talk about the temperature of a particle? And because you know particles are uh, interchanging momenta, 
but here how in terms of microscopics what what do we talk about temperature okay can we look at a single particle and say this is at higher temperature no okay temperature is a thermodynamic concept you can a single individual particle can have kinetic energy it can have potential energy right but a microscopic particle you cannot really talk about a single temperature a cricket ball yes but that's the property of a large number of atoms and molecules which make up the cricket ball right so what we are really asking is what is the microscopic principle which will decide how energy will flow how energy will be shared right so because the after the sharing of energy the two new systems have energy e1 dash and the other has energy e0 minus e1 dash because e2 has to be E0 minus E1 dash, total energy is conserved. And the question we are asking is, what is the value of E1 dash? How will energy be shared? So we assert, uh, for today's class, we assert, uh, though, and I'm using the language of Patria, but actually uh, there are reasons for asserting this. But let's take the Patria route for the moment. We assert that energy is distributed in E1 dash and E2 dash such that omega 0 dash is maximized. Okay, so we talk about entropy ma maximization. Here we are saying that let's be such that omega 0, the total amount of microstates accessed, available to the system after energy has been shared that is maximized so here we are as almost demanding it uh, but uh, there is a background to it and that's the Boltzmann transport equation which came even before s equal to kb log omega where Boltzmann said okay if you have an interacting system it is going to move in a, it's going to evolve in a certain way such that by something called the h theorem some quantity called the h was minimized and later it was realized that minus h uh, is basically the entropy and it is maximized so there there is a principle how, about how a system relaxes to equilibrium entropy some quantity always increases uh, so there's a background to it but we are not discussing all of that we will discuss s theorem if we get time in some other class but today we are just asserting and we are saying that the energy e1 dash and e2 dash will reorganize themselves such that omega zero dash is maximized right so so omega zero dash is omega one dash into omega two dash and we are asking how what is the condition that this is maximized and that's why we're taking a derivative with respect to e1 dash and if it's maximum this will be equal to zero and this is written in this term and now we are taking a derivative with respect to e1 dash we are taking omega 1 dash e1 dash right and then the number of microstates of system 2 but the number of micros states of system 2 is not the same as before that's why you have this dash here again you have this dash because even for system 1 it has evolved and it has energy e to c right and uh, yeah so we are taking derivative of the first term keeping this constant keeping this constant with one taking derivative with respect to e2 now e2 of course can be written i mean so basically you're expressing e2 in terms of e1 uh, and so e2 dash by e1 if there should be a dash here equal to minus 1 because e0 equal to 1 dash plus e2 dash. Uh, in that case, the condition, because this is equal to minus 1, this minus 1 comes here. And if we divide by omega 1 dash and omega 2 dash, we get this relation. Omega 1 dash, del L1, omega 1 dash, sorry, there should be a dash here oh okay so what i've written here is 
dropping the dash and redefining variables. So we are dropping the dash from all of this and say, okay, this is the new variable. So basically, imagine you have the dash all over. So this is the relation that you have. Okay. And this in turn, because you have one upon omega one, del del e one, this, this can be written as del del e one log omega one, ln omega one. Right. Of course, you have the dash, but we are dropping the dash from the entire equation. And similarly, this can be written as del del e2 ln omega 2. And if you if you add the kb on both sides of the equation, which is a constant, then I would remind you, right, because... Uh, then we can write this as entropy 2 and this as entropy 1 and derivative with respect to energy, derivative with respect to energy 2 and thermodynamics wise there was this equation TDS equal to du uh, the dw here there are no work done no boundary condition is changing there is no volume change so we are putting this equal to 0 and then if you notice that del s del u, if you identify this quantity kb log omega 2 with entropy and of course this energy is the energy of the entire system equivalent to u. So del s del u at constant v is because work done is 0 is 1 by t. Right. So you as what you are saying essentially so what I'm saying is if you associate kb log omega 1 with s1 and kb log omega 2 with s2, right, then this quantity is essentially 1 by t and then the condition for equilibrium becomes 1 by t1 equal to 1 by t2, right. So what did we start with? We got this organically out that a system will be in equilibrium if its temperature are equal. That was the, uh, I don't remember, zeroth law or something. I mean, basically, heat flows from a hotter object uh, to a colder object and it will keep on flowing till the temperature of the two are equal, right? And if we associated Kb log omega 2. I mean, this KB log over with entropy, you take its derivative with respect to energy. It has all the properties, whatever that quantity is, we can correlate it by comparing with this equation as 1 by t. And then everything looks again consistent. What did we demand? We demand that omega 0 dash has to be maximum. Right? So a system left to itself maximizes the number of microstates, lands in a macrostate which corresponds to the largest number of microstates possible. It will be the most probable state of the system, right? That's what I was discussing. And we, if we associate again KB log omega with entropy and take its derivative with, with respect to energy, Whatever quantity we get has all the properties of 1 by t because that's where the system will land up in equilibrium, right? Uh, so next, what are we going to... So, so what we showed or we're going to show much later that deviations from this macro state are relatively small. That will be after two or three classes. And equilibration is when t1 equal to t2. Now, we have to check whether the properties of entropy are the same when there's heat exchange and work, work, volume change, the boundary change. So that's what we'll discuss in the next class. We'll stop here for the moment.